Um, okay, so on to our next speaker. Um, so we're super excited uh, to be joined by uh, Laura Fashi, MBE. Um, he's a double world champion, track and road cyclist. Um, she competes in paracycling tandem events um, uh, with Rio Paralympic names under her belt and an awesome food blog uh, too, uh, which I'm a huge fan of. So um, yeah, uh, really thank you so much for joining us, Laura, amid your training right now. So uh, yeah, over to you. Hold on a second, I'm just trying to unmute you. Uh, ah, yes. Hi there everyone, sorry about that. Is that is, can you all hear me now? Yes, perfect. Brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> well, thank you for, thank you for having me um, along to talk and I'll start by sharing a little bit about myself. Um, I'm visually impaired. Um, I've been blind from birth. Uh, it's a hereditary sight loss condition, so it affects my whole family, um, my mum and my two brothers. So we're, we're a bit of a unique family, um, but because I'm kind of surrounded by people who can't see, it took me sort of quite a while to realise that we were a bit unique. Um, and I never really realized that I was different or, you know, I, I never let my visual impairment kind of get in my way or, or stop me from doing what I wanted to do as a child. Uh, and and my, my parents were adamant that as a child, you know, as someone with a visual impairment, I was still going to be successful and I was still going to do whatever I wanted. Um, we're an incredibly sporty family. I grew up doing lots of different sports, athletics, running, swimming, um, rollerblading, you name it, I'd give it a go. Uh, ice skating, I gave, I gave a shot at. Um, but it was only sort of 11 years ago when I was at university um, where I first kind of got on a tandem. Um, I was aware of tandems and, and, and I'd seen tandem racing at the Beijing Paralympics in 2008. And I'd seen it on the TV and thought, that looks really fun. I'd love to get involved in that. Um, but I just didn't know how to get, you know, how to, to get, find the contacts and how to get on a tandem and what to do. So I just sort of didn't think about it. And while I was at university, I was talking to a friend. Um, I was studying to be, physio to be a physiotherapist. Um, I, was, I was having a bit of a bad placement experience so I was talking to a friend and we were chatting and, and she said to me she knew someone who'd been in athletics been a runner been to Beijing and he'd lost his funding from Beijing Paralympics he was visually impaired as well um, he lost his funding and so he tried tandem riding and was doing really well at it and I was suddenly like I really want to get involved in this I, I, I'd love to try it and see what see what it's like um, so I jumped at this sudden, this sudden opportunity that was, you know, a contact like, so I said, could you get me, you know, could you get in touch with him and to ask him how he got involved so that I could, you know, maybe make a connection. Um, and two weeks after I got email from the development coach for British Cycling saying, I hear you're interested in jumping on a tandem and you're visually impaired. Um, I've got someone who might take you out on a tandem if you, if you still want to give it a go and I was like yeah okay so two weeks later again first got went on my out on my first tandem ride um and my my I'd love to say it was plain sailing but my first first tandem experience was riding through the middle of Birmingham city centre um and thinking there's something not quite right here with this with my saddle um and because I was completely a novice, didn't have a clue what was, was going on. I, I just kept quiet for a while and eventually I kind of thought, no, I, I'm really not comfortable. I need to, I need to speak up. And um, the, the seat post clamp had broken and my saddle was literally pointing up to the sky. And I'd been riding for the past half an hour like that. And just because I was so, so new to it, I, I just didn't realise that was wrong. Um, but 
fortunately we managed to fix it and rode home and it didn't put me off um a few weeks later i did my first race um and that went really well and got selected for a european race um and then suddenly i was like oh you know, six months, six weeks after being on a bike, getting on a bike for the first time, I got selected for my first world championship. And it's a scary, scary how quick it all happened because I didn't know how to ride a bike. I was so, I, I, I was so clueless about it all. I, I just did what I was told and um, kind of learned very quickly. Um, and and yeah, my, my first world were road racing in, Italy, the, the September 2009, I got a bronze in the road race. Um, and at that point, I kind of, it suddenly dawned on me that, you know, I might not, I might not know what I'm doing, but I've obviously got some sort of talent for this. Um, and I suddenly kind of became aware that going to London Paralympics was a real opportunity um, and that became an obsession of mine. I, I, I wanted to, to go to London, I wanted to become a gold Paralympic champion, and win, win a gold medal in my home country and um, I did get to go, you know, I, I got selected for London. Um, I didn't actually have a very good London experience. Um, my, my first two events, track based, so I do both tracks track cycling and road cycling um, and my first two events were track based it was the kilometre and the three kilometre pursuit um, kilometre time trial I finished fourth in both uh, which is a really horrible place to finish I think because it's the first place where you don't have anything to show for it um, and then in the road on the road which is my I, I do track cycling because British cycling are good at it. I do road cycling because I love it. I love being out on the road. I love feeling the wind on my face, the movement, the, the I love I love the outdoors anyway. So road cycling is, is my thing. It really is. Um and the fact that I get to ride up and down hills, um, especially down and I'm not the one in control is is something I really, really enjoy. People think I must be mental. But I, I'm an adrenaline junkie at heart, and the faster we can go, the the more I the more I enjoy it. Um, so yeah, so we road road racing in London time trial. Um, we were actually we were leading with around um, sort of five k to go. It was a thirty k time trial. Um, turned a corner, went from going downhill quite quick into an uphill, and as we changed gears our um, chain jam and so we had to get off the stop come to a complete stop get off the bike and wait for our mechanics to come and fix the bike um, and watch everyone else go past us and watch my gold medal that I was desperately trying to win sort of vanish from out of my grip um, and I found that devastating if I'm honest um, and I think I probably said the words don't ever let me get on a bike again when I when I eventually did cross the line. Um, and I, I, I really struggled to kind of pick myself up. Um, but I did, because <laughs> a year later, I, um, well, pretty much a year to the day of that experience, I became prime trial world champion, um, which, you know, it was a, it was a big turnaround for me. Um, and that was my first first world title. Um, I then won my second world title the year later uh, um, in the road race. Um, and then I got selected for the Rio Paralympics in 2016, um, where I became Paralympic champion in on the track. Surprisingly. Um, I never expected, never expected to win, um, win a, a title on the track. Um, but yeah, it, it happened. I, and I then, I then have been world type, world champion in, on the, in the pursuit as well, uh, in 2018. So I've got three world titles and a Paralympic champ, uh, title as well to my name at the moment. I'm still very much 
keen to go to Tokyo so long as it goes ahead. Um, it's all been, you know, we were all set for Tokyo 2020, but obviously goalposts are mobile and everything changes. And um, we're just keeping everything crossed that we can still go to Tokyo. Um, and in some ways, actually, for me, the delay to the games and the whole COVID experience has been quite beneficial. Um, I really struggled post uh, post Rio mentally with with cycling. I, I wasn't in a I wasn't in a happy place, um, and so that's why I started my food blog, which is called Blindingly Good Food. Um, I love food. I love cooking. Uh, cycling. I do. You know, I, I'm very lucky. I get to do two things that most people, you know, call hobbies. But cycling is, you know, is my job. I'm full full time funding, but I love I do love it as well. But and then cooking is my is what I do to relax. Um, but yeah, I set up the blog to kind of find a, a distraction from cycling when things weren't going so well, like so that I had something else to think about, um, and I can get myself lost in recipes and 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 things and not feel bad about um not always thinking about cycling and what I've learned in the past few years is that you know you need to in order to have a balanced life in life you need you, you need more than just cycling like I needed something else um and once I got my you know once I started writing my food blog and kind of allowed my p passion and love for, for cooking to kind of develop more I became a much Kind of more rounded individual and um my my cycling you know my, my training and my my cycling improved because i felt happier so i learned a lot about that and then because of i, I because of my kind of feeling in, in cycling and I, I sort of set myself that i was going to retire after tokyo i was getting to tokyo paralympics and i was just Count down the days really and then it got postponed and I was, I was sat there for, for quite a while and sort of this around this sort of time last year thinking how can I do this for another year but actually being able to take a little bit of time away from the race the stress of racing and time to myself to kind of focus on me I really refound my love for cycling um, and I realized how much I love training and enjoy doing what I do and so in that way COVID really benefited me um I'm sorry if you can suddenly my uh, my guide dog has just decided to appear um I, I don't know if you'll be able to see her on camera but she's just walked into the room if you can hear her we can see a bit of her tail uh, she's very very welcome <laughs> yeah she always picks her moments um but yeah <laughs> so um no I uh, I, I found kind of refound my love for cycling and, and it's it's really reinvigorated myself. Like I've I'm I'm in now far better shape than I was this time last year. So I'm incredibly excited about going to Tokyo in six months. And I, I think in in many ways this, this year delay will will probably have given me the the chance to get the best out of myself because I don't think I would have um you know, if it was September last year. So I'm, <laughs> in some ways, I'm quite grateful for the delay. Um, yeah, so riding a tandem is kind of, there's, there's two people, obviously. I like the two people. Um, I'm, I'm the one that goes on the back. And then there's a fully sighted person who goes in the front. Um, I, the girl I'm riding with now, I've been riding with since 2013, pretty much. We've had, I've, I've ridden with a few people sort of within that time as well but we we keep we keep ending up back together her name's Corrine Hall um and yeah we both train together not all the time and I think this is, that's one thing COVID has really been taught us is that we don't actually need to train with each other very much um I do a lot of my training on turbo if any of you ride with um, I'm forever on there. I, I live on, I think last year I, I spent something like the equivalent of 23 days. It worked out as 
I spend a lot of hours on a turbo. Um, and we do some, we've been able to do some training on the velodrome, but that's still open to elite sport at the moment. Um, so yeah, so I do, I do bits of training with her and then most of it solo based. Um, we train, well, I train six days a week, uh, we average around 18, 20 hours of bike time. Also do a bit of strength and conditioning work, gym work. Um, and yeah, I guess if there, has anyone, you know, what sort of questions have been asked? Thank you, Laura. That's amazing. I think there's lots of very inspired and people here. And we were going through your journey uh, full of ups and downs. I think we were all, our heart was breaking when you were sort of losing your love for cycling. So we're so glad yeah. to see you back again. <laughs> so we do have yeah. some questions. Sorry. <laughs> I was just going to say, it's, you know, it keeps pulling me back. So I, I must love cycling, really. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so, yeah, over to Lois, who's, um, who's been collecting the questions for you. Thanks, Laura. Um, there's so much love for you in the chat. People are really <laughs> happy to hear about kind of your passions with cycling and then with the, the, um, the food blogging that you're doing. Someone said you might see your MasterChef soon, which would be... <laughs> Thing. Um, you yeah. answered so many of the questions that um, people had posted already, which is great. Um, a couple of the other ones. Um, somebody asked, um, what's your favourite distance? Which kind um, of cycle do you enjoy the most? Uh, time trialling. So ten I, I love a 10 mile TT. My, that's my real ballpark. Um, I quite like, I would, there's, there's a... I, I have a love-hate relationship with the three kilometer pursuit on the track because um, it's it's over quickly, but it also hurts a lot, <laughs> and I have to do it twice. Um, but yeah, no, I, I love I love I love a ten mile PT. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's um, yeah, it's really interesting to hear about all the different types of um, races there are as well because I'm not really familiar with them all, so it's really interesting. Um, yeah, so I could break it down. There's a for, for paracycling anyway. We have we have on a tandem. We have two track three three track events. We have um, the match sprint, which is head to head two bikes. But that's not in the Paralympics for for some reason. It's a real shame because it's a it's a really exciting race to watch. Um, but that that does happen at the world. And then you do have you you have your one kilometer time trial, which is four laps of the velodrome, and then your three kilometer so women it's three kilometer pursuit, which is bikes opposite sides of the track, and you kind of trying to catch each other, and it's whoever posts the fastest time, um, and the men do four kilometers, um, which I, I, there's an element of me that would actually quite like to compete over the four k because I'm I'm an endurance rider at heart, so. The longer, the longer, the better for me. Um, and then on the road, we have the time trial, which is fastest bike against the clock. You're all set up a minute apart. Um, and that generally for, for a tandem is around 30k is race distance um, at a Worlds or a, or a Paralympics. And then the road race is, you know, you, you, you standard road race. Um, and that tends to be around 80k for, for, for the women. Um, and a little bit longer for the men. And how quickly would you be doing 80k and like what times do people achieve? Uh, uh, so road racing, 80k is sort of two, two, and a, two hours, two and a bit hours. Um, for, for a 10 mile TT, my fastest time I've done 19 minutes, 54 seconds, 57 seconds. Um, for the pursuit, the world record is three, three minutes, 22 seconds. Um, my Current fastest time is 3:25, which I did in training not, not all that long ago. So it's, it's, we're hitting some good form now, which is quite nice to have to carry on forward. Um, and the yeah, so on, and our time trials generally are around 45 minutes, depending on terrain. Obviously, it has a big impact. Wow. Um, somebody asked in the chat, um, how easy is it to kind of get into the rhythm of tandem cycling? There's a few people who, um, you know, consider trying it, but just not sure what it's like. Yeah, uh, 
it's I I mean I love it um I I would say I kind of try and describe it as it's a bit like being on a in a rowing a rowing pairs so you, you both work you're both kind of working together um and you're both putting in the same effort some it, you can't put two very good bike riders on a tandem and automatically go fast there is definitely some technique to it you need to be in in sync when you're pedaling you need to you do need to have some compatibility um and and but it's it's really fun to always have someone with you you, you never get lonely when you go on a tandem especially a, a road ride if you're on a tandem there's always someone there um and it, it's just it's 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 fun it, it is it's really fun it's a bit like it's just it is exactly like riding a bike. It's just a lot longer. Um, so it has a turning circle of a bus. And it sounds <laughs> like you've had a really amazing partner um, in your tandem cycling for like the last, what do you say, since 2013? So for eight years, that's really cool. Yeah, we've, I've, I've ridden, so I've, I've raced since with Kareen, we've, um, we've raced lots now. I have, I've ridden with several others as well. And, and it, within the time I started riding with Kareem, there have been a couple of years where I've ridden with other people instead. Um, I've had mixed kind of experiences. Um, some, some, some have gone really well, and then others we've just not got, you know, we, we've just not clicked. Um, and, but the thing with it, you know, I keep, we, I don't, I don't get a say in who I ride with with British Cycling. British Cycling select the pairings and select who I, you know, I get on the tandem with. And the majority of the time, it's really good. But I have had a couple of experiences where I've not, I've not trusted the person on the front. And that is a big thing. Obviously, I'm putting my life in someone else's hands. Um, and trust, trust and communication is is a big key to being successful I think. That's um, great that was one of the questions actually around how do you build up that trust is there any do you do any kind of off off not cycling um like mm, team building yeah. kind of things? No we haven't we should do more I think especially at the start with Kareen it just clicked and some you know something was obviously right with, with us the, the um, she actually she came out to Mallorca on a training camp um, to ride with another girl, and uh, one thing led to another. And I said, "Oh, shall we just jump on the tandem?" Um, and she said, "Yeah, okay." So we did, and um, yeah, it just it just felt right straight off. Um, so yeah, so but you do you go through so much together that it's hard not to end up being like a bit of a married couple and then there are times where you've been you know if we've been away racing and you're like oh I just I just need a break from you but that's not because we don't like each other or anything. it's just you know when you are when you eat because we, we we generally when we go away we share a room so you like you eat sleep train repeat together um and you do sometimes need a bit of space yeah I'd imagine so. Okay, <laughs> we've got so many questions, but we're going to have to move on to the next speaker. But one last question: Somebody asked, um, "Do you take your guide dog to uh, with you when you go yeah. to to train? And if so, what does your dog do whilst you're uh, cycling?" <laughs> so she comes to the velodrome with me. Yeah, because um, you know that that part of having her enables me to get out and about independently. So she she always comes to the velodrome, and I have a little. Um, like a pop-up tent that she goes in when when I'm in track centre. She, she sleeps. She just she just sleeps all the time when when I'm doesn't doesn't even these days she doesn't even flinch at when because I've taken her to a few velodrome races and when the gun goes or anything she doesn't care. She just she just chilled out. Um, I have been able to travel with her even like to races abroad. Um, and she's, she's been to a few races, but unfortunately, um, we don't. I can no longer do that because of we're no longer in the EU. I've lost. I've lost the. There's no longer a pet pass 
support scheme that enables me to travel with her, which is a real, is a real shame for me because she is, she's not only like my eyes and my independence, but she's, she's also a big part of my mental health because, because having her around, you know, gives me that, gives me that ability to be independent and feel confident, you know, within myself. So yeah, that's, it's a real shame. Yeah. Um, I hope that they um, kind of ch change it to make that possible for yeah. you. They kind of have the adjustment into us being not part of the EU because I, I can see how that's um, yeah, a massive obstacle for you and, and other people in your position. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a big thing, but I get it's just the rules at the moment because because the Britain have, have lost. I don't understand it. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> One of those things. Um, well, thank you so much, Laura. We all, everyone, has absolutely loved um, hearing um, your story. Um, and I'll pass back to, over. To want to check out my food blog? It is blendingly good food, and you're more than welcome if you do. If there are any other questions or anything, then people, you know, can contact me through there, and I'm I'm more than happy to chat or or answer any questions that way. If there's anything else at any point. Thank you, Laura. That's fab. I have shared your link to your blog in the chat, and there's oh, already, already got some new fans. So um, <laughs> thank that's you very fab. much. Thank you, Laura. Okay, so on to our final speaker um, of the night. So um, next up is Vera, um, and she is an aspiring ultra distance uh, athlete, and she's also a tandem enthusiast. So if you've got any more tandem questions that we didn't manage to get to, uh, maybe Vera will uh, be able to help with that. Um, she's um, 